Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be going over the seven cheap purchases that will massively improve your solar system, whether you already have solar or you're simply looking to get solar in the future. Let's get into it. Coming in at number seven, we have Critigards. Now, Critigards are not really that talked about and I can understand why. They don't boost the performance of the panels nor offer any sort of improvements to the technology. However, in many parts of the country, I would make an argument that they should be required with new installations. The the reality is the four to six inch spacing between the roof and panels creates a perfect environment for squirrels and birds and rodents to nest in. And in a lot of instances, we see this happen. Unfortunately, these animals will not just sleep and rest under the panels. It is very common for squirrels and other animals to actually eat at the wires for whatever reason, which can lead to a number of issues. And this can unfortunately also cause a fire hazard as they tend to bring with them sticks, leaves, and other things of that sort under the panels over time. Now, there are two common types of credit cards that you can invest into. The first one is gonna be the classic wire guard. This is gonna be fairly inexpensive and you can shop around different styles on sites like Amazon for under a dollar a foot. The second type of credit card is actually gonna be a little bit more expensive and it's called a skirt or a contour trim. This type of credit card is gonna require some additional installation materials as well as the fact that it's gonna take longer to install. So I have seen this running at times, two to three times the price of a traditional critter guard. Now, from a functionality perspective, they will accomplish exactly the same thing, so your decision will likely be around which you prefer aesthetically and whether or not you deem it worth it to invest more money into a skirt guard or not. Now, moving on to the sixth purchase that will make your system so much better, I want to talk about something that I believe should be included with most new solar systems, however, unfortunately is not, and that is going to be consumption monitors. Now, one of the coolest things about having solar panels is that in most cases, depending upon your inverter, through an application on your smartphone, you can monitor at any time how much power your solar system is producing, even down to it per panel basis. In fact, you can look at production graphs throughout the year, month, day, and even hour. But one thing that could be missing is seeing how much power your house is actually using and at what times during the day. Now, your utility company will provide this information on your electric bill at the end of the month, but wouldn't it be more neat just to go to that same application on your smartphone where you see how much your panels are producing to be able to see how much power your house is using and how much of the excess solar that you're producing is being sent back to the grid. Well, this is where CTs come in. CTs can be installed with most inverter systems. Many people are familiar with the Enphase CTs, but they can also be installed with systems like Solar Edge or other inverters. Fortunately, they are very inexpensive. You can buy them on Amazon for about $30. However, the installation can be a little tricky and dangerous if you do not have experience working with electrical. In the case of Enphase CTs, you will have to wire the CTs between the breaker box in your house and the Enphase combiner box, a process that should take between 30 minutes to an hour. Now, I would just recommend that if you haven't gotten solar yet, to have them installed with the original installation. As a reminder, if you are working with a contractor on your installation, you want to avoid making any additions or improvements to the system yourself, as contractors can void your warranties by you doing that. So take that into account before pulling the trigger and spending the afternoon installing these yourself. The only reason why I speculate that most installers do not include them as a standard installation practice is because they they increase the install timelines for the electricians and they're not necessarily required to install them. Moving on to number five, I want to speak about another thing that I wish was standard practice with installs, however, is not, and that is going to be something that you'll have to pay a little bit more for, and that is going to be attic runs. Attic runs simply refer to having the installer install and run all of the conduit runs through the attic instead of on top of the roof. Because when we're installing solar on the roof, we need to connect the separate arrays by wiring and then have that wiring run down to the main service panel, we need to run the wires through metal conduit. Now, conduit is not always pretty, even when it's painted. And so if you have appropriate attic space, you can actually have your installer simply run the system's wiring in conduit from under the solar array through the attic and then spit out on the side of the house that your main service panel 
panel is located. Due to the fact that running conduit through the attic can take significantly longer than just running it on the roof, as well as the fact that attics in the summer can exceed 120 degrees in temperature and it can become a health hazard for installers, most installers will have to charge extra for the service. Costs that I've seen typically run about $300 to $400 per solar array on the roof. So if you think it's worth it, I certainly recommend having it planned out before your installer comes out to install. Obviously, this will only be feasible if you have an attic, if you have a flat roof or a top floor ceiling, this will not be feasible. Or if you've invested into a spray foam installation or another intensive attic installation product and you don't want to interfere with that, you can just stick with the traditional classic roof runs. And as a reminder, guys, if you are in the process of shopping for different solar options for your house for the first time and you'd like to get a proposal for a system, potentially with one of these products that we talked about in the video, or maybe you already have a quote and you'd simply like to receive a comparison bid just to make sure that you're getting a good deal, feel free to reach out by booking a call using the link in the description and we will be happy to provide you with some options to your home. Moving on to number four of cheap purchases that make solar systems so much better, I want to talk about microinverters. If you have been shopping solar or you've been around the industry, you may have found that there are two main types of inverters that companies sell, either string inverters or microinverters. And typically it's split about 50-50 in how much they're sold. Without getting into too much detail, with a string inverter system, you have one inverter on the side of the house, which converts the DC electricity that your solar panels produce into AC power that the house can use. And for many years, this was the only option that there was, and it was the norm. However, a while back, companies started to have issues with the string inverters failing and going down. And so they came out with a solution that would give each individual panel its own inverter so that in the case that a single inverter goes out, only one panel would not be producing power until that inverter is replaced, unlike the string inverter in which the whole system is not working until that one inverter gets fixed. And this is what microinverters were able to do. Now, microinverters are a little bit more expensive than string inverters, and they take longer to install, so many companies still do not choose to use them. And so for that reason, many companies do still choose to install the traditional string inverter, though for only a 10 to 15 price per kilowatt difference, I typically recommend microinverters. However, there are circumstances in which string inverters can be the better option. It just depends. Microinverters will also provide panel level optimization meaning that the performance of one panel does not negatively affect the performance of another panel. And with the microinverters, you'll typically have a 25-year warranty as opposed to the standard 12-year warranty that string inverters offer. Moving on to number three of the cheap purchases that will make a solar system so much better, I want to talk about something that is going to apply to anybody looking at battery products, and that is going to be investing into a generator module. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, battery backups are a great solution for providing backup storage to the house in the event of an outage, as well as being a system that can power the house through the night. But what if I told you there was something you could do to add a second layer of battery storage in the event of an outage? This is possible through generator modules. Generator modules can be installed into a select amount of batteries, and what they provide is the ability to connect the generator to the battery and provide additional power to the house in the event of an outage. The battery that is most well known for providing this capability is the Franklin Whole Home, and with its generator module, which you must buy as an add-on, it will be compatible with most models of standby generators and will allow you the ability to essentially power the home loads through the generator in the event that the battery runs out of storage and you need an alternative alternative form of power to run the house. As far as pricing is concerned, again, this is not standard with the Franklin battery installs, nor most other battery installs. And I have oftentimes seen these run about $500 to $800 if you want to include them with the battery. Moving on to number two, I wanted to talk about something that you can invest into after you've gone solar that can drastically increase your solar system's production over time. And that is gonna be a biannual cleaning service. Now, there is no question that over time, solar panels will accumulate dust, debris, pollen, and other things which can cover the glass and restrict the sunlight from making unobstructed contact with the solar cells, especially in parts of the country that are prone to dust storms like Arizona or pollen blooms like Texas in the Northwest. Having a company that can come out one to two times a year and just wipe down the panels 
is a great idea, especially after seasons like the spring and summer when the dust and pollen can begin to accumulate onto the panels. Now, you certainly can do the service yourself, especially if you're confident getting up on the roof and you have the equipment, but I would recommend making sure that you use a filtered water system, which has been demineralized, so that you do not leave metal residues on the panels. In my experience, solar panel cleaning companies can charge as little as 10 to $15 a panel, and it does not take long to do, so I certainly recommend you get some quotes from a local company that specializes in solar panel cleaning after you get installed. Now, I've got one more left to go, but I'm curious to know if I left anything off the list, so let me know down below in the comments if you think there's a cheap product that is worth adding to your system, and I'll give you my feedback. So finally moving on to number one, I wanted to talk about EV chargers. Now, EV chargers have been around for a while, and you may already have an EV charger at the house, but I want to tell you how getting one that can connect directly to your solar system can provide a number of additional benefits. The biggest benefit of having an EV charger that can pair directly with your solar system is having a place for your excess power that the panels produce during the afternoon to go to instead of going back to the grid. As many of you guys know, it is becoming increasingly popular for utility companies to compensate homeowners less and less for excess power that they ship back to the grid. So with EV chargers, they can provide you with the ability to have the car hooked up to the charger directly in the afternoon and have all of the excess power that the solar panels produce go towards filling up the car. This can not only save you money in charging costs, but also avoids giving away your excess kilowatt hours to the utility for a partial credit. Additionally, EV chargers will soon become an alternative form of backup power in the event of an outage. Bidirectional charging or vehicle to home charging is finally becoming a reality in the next year with Tesla's release of the first bidirectional charger, meaning cars can now back feed their power from the car to the home battery, then powering the house. So expect to see the same with other manufacturers in the near future. As far as pricing, installed costs for EV chargers typically range between $800 to $1,000 for the single EV charger, and pricing has not yet been released for the bidirectional chargers, but additional hardware will be required to install, so the price would likely be higher. Now, these seven little things to add when you go solar matter very much, but if you are in the process of shopping for different solar, you need to also make sure that you avoid common scams. So make sure you check out my video going over the five most common rooftop solar panel scams to avoid in 2024, which will pop up on the screen now. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.